Ang ating topic ngayon is solving corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So, natapos na natin sa nakaraang video yung discussion natin sa triangle congruence postulates and theorem. So, ngayon, uh, we will be focusing on the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Ang ating objective, to solve corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So, recall natin yung mga diniscuss na nating triangle congruence postulate and theorem. Simulan natin sa SSS or side, side, side. If the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. We also discuss the SAS or side, angle, side. If the two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Diniscuss din natin ang ASA o angle side angle if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And for the last, the AAS theorem or the angles, angle side, if two angles and non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of another triangle, then the, tw uh, then the two triangles are congruent. Ayan. So, diniscuss din natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng CPCTC, which means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay? So, simulan natin dito. Meron tayong triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Pag sinabing corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, lahat ng corresponding parts ay congruent sa isa't isa. So, here are the following markings. So, meron tayong mga markings na kung saan nagpapakita na ang bawat sukat ng bawat corresponding parts ay pareho or uh, parehas or the same, exactly the same. Okay? So, yun. Simulan natin sa corresponding sides. So, if segment or side AB congruent sa segment DE or side DE, then the side AB is equal to side DE. Side AC is congruent to side DF, then AC is equal to DF. And if side BC is congruent to side EF, then BC is equal to EF. Ibig sabihin ng gumamit ng equality symbol, tinutukoy niya yung mismong sukat ng mga sides. Dito naman sa angle or corresponding angles, meron tayong if angle A is congruent to angle D, then the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle D. So, gumamit tayo ngayon ng symbol ng M, stands for or reads as measure, at gumamit tayo ng equality symbol. Since, ang tinutukoy nito ay yung sukat ng angle. So, tandaan, ang congruent symbol indicates the congruency of polygon. So, the right way to, uh, to use this symbol is this. So, yan. Sa una, pag sinabing side AB congruent to side DE, and the conclusion will be, AB is equal to DE as well as the corresponding angles. So, meron tayong mga steps in solving for the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So, step 1 natin, ito drawing natin yung triangles kung hindi provided. And then, we need to label the parts at isulat ang mga measurements. For step 2, i-verify natin kung yung mga given pair ng triangles ay congruent gamit ang mga iba't ibang klase ng postulates and theorem. Sa step number 3, i-determine natin yung mga corresponding parts. And for step 4, i-identify natin yung mga missing parts by the given parts. So, example tayo. Find the measure of the indicated parts, so side IN, side IK, Angle M and angle U given the illustration. So, 
Base sa step 1, ito drawing daw natin yung triangles kung hindi po provided. Pero dito sa ating example number 1, meron na siyang illustrations. So, yan. Meron tayong dalawang triangles. At nakalabel na rin ang mga parts at measurements. So, meron na tayong step 1. Pwede na tayong sumunod sa step 2. Sa step 2 natin, i-verify natin yung kung yung dalawang triangles natin congruent. So, since base sa mga given parts, pwede nating i-apply ang ASA or yung angle side angle. At yun ang step number 2. Para sa step number 3, we can now uh, determine the corresponding sides and corresponding angles. So, sa corresponding sides, meron tayong side MU corresponds to side IN. Okay. Ayan po. Side UG corresponds to side NK. Side MG corresponds to side IK. So, yan po yung corresponding sides. Pagdating sa corresponding angles, meron tayong angle M corresponds to angle I. Angle U corresponds to angle N. Angle G corresponds to angle K. So, tapos na tayo sa step number 3. Pagdating sa step number 4, we need to use the given parts to identify the missing parts. So, dito, sa letter A, ang hinahanap natin, if IN is equal to MU and MU is 13.49, ibig sabihin, ang sukat ni IN is also 13.49. And for letter B, if IK is equal to MG and MG is equal to 11, then IK is equal to 11. And for the measure of angle M is equal to the measure of angle I and the measure of angle I is 60, then the measure of angle M is equal to 60. And for letter D, if the measure of angle U is equal to the measure of angle N, and the measure of angle N is equal to 50, then the measure of angle U is equal to 50. But wait, saan galing si 50? So, base sa ating uh, property, which is transitive, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. So, remember that the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So, dahil dito sa ating triangles, meron na tayong given sa triangle I and K. Ang, ang angle I natin ay 60 degrees. Ang angle K natin ay 70 degrees. So, meron na tayong kabuang 130 degrees. So, since ang kabuang ng tatlong angle na to ay 180 Meron ka na lang 50 na hinahanap. Ayan, 50 na hinahanap. So, dahil si angle N ay 50, ibig sabihin, si angle U ay 50 din. 50 degrees. So, yan po yung example number 1. Pagdating sa example number 2, given ka ng triangle HOT congruent sa triangle PIE. So, HO is equal sa X plus 3. OT is equal to 7x minus 1, HT equal siya sa 5x plus 2, and PE is equal to 2x plus 5. Hahanapin natin si value ng x, si HT na haba at ang IE. So, dahil wala tayong illustration sa ating example number 2, ito drawing natin yung triangles, ililabel ang parts, at isusulat ang mga measurements. So, yan po yung step 1. For step number 2, i-verify natin kung yung dalawang triangles ay congruent. So, base dyan sa ating given, we can say that the two triangles are congruent by SSS. At take note, nandun na mismo sa given. So, na-verify na na yung dalawang triangles ay congruent sa isa't isa. And for step 3, I-determine natin mga corresponding parts. So, since SSS yung pwede natin i-apply at given ang mga sides, we can use the corresponding sides. So, side HO corresponds to side PI. Side OT corresponds to side IE. H side HT corresponds to side PE. Yan. 
So, base dito sa corresponding side sa step 3, para sa step 4, gagamitin natin yung mga given parts. Yan. So, kapag given parts tayo, hahanapin mo sa illustration ngayon yung pwede mong gamitin na kompleto para makuha natin yung missing part. So, ang pwede natin gamitin corresponding sides dito dahil may kompletong given ay yung mismong HT and PE. So, makukuha natin yung value ng X. So, solving for X, we can say that uh, HT, okay, so sulat natin dito, uh, let's say yellow, HT is equal to PE. Then, by substitution, HT is 5X plus 2 and PE is 2X plus 5. We can now solve for X. So, yeah. So, using the subtraction property of equality, we can have 5x minus 2x is equal to 5 minus 2. And by using division property of equality, so, ang value ng x natin ay 1. So, meron na tayong value ng x. So, to solve for, I mean, para mahanap natin yung haba ng ht, we need to substitute the value of x. So, ang ht natin ay 5x plus 2. So, isa substitute lang natin. So, ang haba ng ht ay 7. Yan. So, para makuha naman si ie, isa substitute lang din natin siya. Dahil si ot ay congruent kay ie, dahil sila ay corresponding sides, Ayan, whatever the length of OT will be the length of IE. So, magkakaroon ka ng 6. So, pag sinubstitute natin siya. So, ganyan po ang pagsasolve ng corresponding parts of congruent triangles.